All right, bitches, let's go get married. Now then, shall we? It is time to show you my precious family jewels. Elias and I make our way up the staircase as I softly grip his ethereal arm. I watch as his free hand grips the dark mahogany railing. The stairs creak, a little too loud. Leaning closer to Elias, my hold on him tightens. Do not fret, my dear. These stairs are safe as long as you stay by my side. I give him an uncertain smile, trying not to remember the state of the decrepit stairs when I first entered the mansion. They now look elegant, lined with soft, gold-trimmed carpeting. Careful now. Elias places his hand atop mine as we walk down the hallway. He wears a faint, complacent smile. Is it tiring? Hmm? Making the mansion... A pause. Not sure how I should phrase the question. Not all of it is exactly hospitable. You mean, making it look like a ghost of its former glory? <laughs> he chuckles at his little pun. With a gentle pat of my hand, he sighs. <sighs> Admittedly, yes. It's quite tiring. But if it makes you comfortable, then I shall keep doing it. It also brings back many memories. The smile on his face drifts into wistfulness. For a moment, he looks almost sad. I regret bringing it up. My grip on his arm loosens and I give him a smile back. I think you've done an excellent job, Elias, with everything. I appreciate your kind words, my dear. We're back at his bedroom. Just a moment, my dear. I mean, we really are going for the family jewels, aren't we? He lets go of my arm, making his way to the vanity. Instead of reaching for one of the drawers, he presses his hand against the wall, causing the vanity to lower and reveal a hidden compartment. I knew this mansion had at least one secret passage. Elias sifts through the drawers inside the compartment, eventually pulling out an unassuming dark wooden box. He slowly opens it, revealing a ring, necklace, and a pair of earrings. Ah, here we are then. My eyes light up with wonder as the jewelry sparkles, even without any lighting shining on it. The ring is a gold band with a large diamond at the center, a beautiful classic for a reason. Just the sheer size of the diamond alone catches my eye. Meanwhile, the necklace is a string of pearls with a ruby amulet on it, and so very dazzling to gaze upon. It's like looking at the very definition of opulence. That sounds very much like the... The necklace that Violet was wearing, right? Or like the necklace that you see in the beginning of, like in the menu? Something tells me that necklace is evil. No, pearl necklace from the family jewels for me. And lastly, the earrings are a drop pair with a Victorian love knot at the base with an opal centerpiece and a yellow tinted green sapphire at the bottom. Do not hesitate, dear. Choose whichever your heart desires. They're all so gorgeous. I can't possibly choose. Nevertheless, I reach out, gravitating towards the... So, I feel like the drama answer is the necklace. But I personally would probably get the ring. So do we go for drama? <laughs> I mean... Don't I always go for the drama? Definitely this pearl necklace with the red ruby sapphire on it. The necklace is heavy in my hands as I gently pick it up. Boy, bet I could pay off all my student loans and then some with this thing. I study it closer. It looks almost familiar. Do you like it? I do, but I think I've seen this before. Maybe from an old picture? Elias tilts his head. It was one of my mother's favorite pieces in this collection. It's also the most expensive. But does he like his mother? Or did I just fuck up? <laughs> As he says this, it suddenly becomes even more heavy in my hands. Here, allow me. Elias takes the necklace and moves behind me. Could you tell me more about yourself, Elias? I'm curious to know as much as I can about my groom. Of course. 
His hands are cold against my skin as he slides the jewelry around my neck. He clasps it shut, hands lingering for a moment on my skin. He gives a tired sigh before speaking, a hint of melancholy lingering on his lips. I must confess that I was born quite sickly, and my birth came with so many complications that it nearly killed my mother. Even after that ordeal, there was nothing the doctors could do to help my weak constitution. I suppose that's why my father and siblings treated me the way they did. I was seen as a nuisance, a problem. I don't entirely blame them. Well, you should. You should entirely blame them. I'm sorry. It's far away and in the past now, so enough about that. Elias moves back around to look at me, a cold, ghostly hand trailing along my cheek. The sadness from his voice has all but disappeared. Marvelous. The necklace fits you perfectly. I angle my head up to get a clear view of it in the mirror. It certainly is gorgeous, but I know that I can get more information out of Elias if I play my cards right. I'm certain this necklace must bestow infinite beauty upon its wearer. Surely you've seen others don it before. As I mentioned, this was my mother's favorite piece. It grazed her neck quite frequently. And what of your previous bride-to-be? Did she not wear this as well? My... my previous bride... The smile slips from his lips, and his eyes go hazy. I brace myself for another vision. I feel bad. I know it's unpleasant for Elias as much as it is for me, but he's a key witness to the mystery of this manor. His whole life and death, as a matter of fact. The silence stretches on for what feels like forever. Elias' face is completely blank, devoid of any emotion. Elias, dearest, I meant no offense. Elias grips my shoulders, his fingers phasing through my skin, causing a shiver. Her name was Violet, Violet Dupont, the sister of our groundskeeper. We never wed because she betrayed me the day before our wedding. Which, again, makes no sense, because if you had waited a day, you would have been entitled to the estate. I suppose she and Gerard were desperate. I should have been on my guard when they continued to ask me about the location of the family jewels day after day. I thought the necklace, the grandest piece in the collection, would have been enough to hold her interest. I had promised to share the rest of them with her after our consummation. That sounds a little skeevy. <laughs> but before I could even cry out for help, Gerard held me down while Violet... I put my hand over Elias's in an attempt to show him that I don't need to hear anything else. Forgive me, Elias. We don't need to speak of her anymore. <sighs> Elias's grip on my shoulders eases, and he gives me a sad smile. No, you needn't apologize whatsoever. There's no need for me to reminisce, and you shouldn't have to compare yourself to her. Well, yeah, I don't want to be compared to your murderer. At least that's what I'd like to say. And I want to stop, but I need to know the truth, straight from the horse's mouth. Tell me about the things that brought joy to your life. You have a fine eye for beauty, Elias. I'm sure there were other items you held precious and dear. You've seen the greenhouse already, so you can imagine its splendor in full bloom. I quite liked reading on the bench there when my energy permitted. It was quite difficult to visit in a consistent manner, however. So I often had flowers brought up so that I could enjoy the fragrant floral bouquets in the comfort of my room. Elias leaves my side momentarily to grab an ornate box from the vanity. Why is he sliding over so slowly? <laughs> Aside from the flowers, there was also a family heirloom that belonged to my grandmother. It was an antique silver mirror, and a very charming one at that. At least... I lean forward as he opens the box and I peer into its contents. It's the broken glass! That was... before it shattered. It's the same shards of glass I found while investigating his room before. I liked it quite a lot, and ended up taking it out of the attic in my early childhood. I used to look into it and imagine myself as some sort of fair prince. The fair prince of Bel-Air. It was innocent daydreaming, but alas, 
my six older siblings would often mock my love of the mirror. And with such a weak constitution and gentle demeanor, there was little I could do. When six people who aren't very fond of you get physical, well, you can imagine what might happen. The mirror was shattered, and I was the one blamed. He gently closes the box and pauses. Grandmother didn't seem to mind that it broke, but I cried for days. Maybe it was sentimentality, guilt, or fear. But whatever the case, I simply could not let it go. I forbade any of the maids or butlers to toss out the shards. The mirror was meant to be a wedding gift, and I was determined to have it fixed one day. It seems like that day never came. Yes. It was one of my greatest regrets when I died, silly as it sounds. So maybe we can repair the mirror for him, and then he can move on. The world needs more men like you, Elias. I don't think you're silly for having emotions. Thank you for understanding, my dear. The melancholy atmosphere in the room fades as he smiles warmly at me. I am quite eager for our union. I think it'll be something glorious. I've always wanted a grand wedding, and to think I'll be marrying someone as lovely as you. <laughs> Stop. <laughs> well, you are too kind, Elias. Come. Follow me outside. I have much to show you. We exit his bedroom together and go down the stairs one last time, my new accessory adding weight to my every step. Soon we shall be wed, my darling, and we'll have all of eternity together. Are you excited? Fucking jazzed, man. <laughs> Elias sure seems to be. I... I don't know how to answer that. Whether I should be sincere and tell him the truth, or continue the charade. I've spent the whole night here, but I have more questions than I have answers. So many loose ends and no way to tie them. And yet, I'm about to tie the knot with a man I barely know, while I have no idea if the other one will reach me in time. I'm so screwed. <laughs> My love, what's on your mind? Nothing. Uh, uh I mean... I really am a bad actor in the end. With everything that has happened, it's about to happen. I must be feeling the entire range of human emotion right now, my beloved. Nervous. Excited. And so, so full of dread. We return to the foyer where this whole night began. Elias glides along the floor while I do my best to keep up with him, trying not to arouse suspicion. He places his hands on the door behind the steps, then turns to me. Are you ready, my love? I have worked tirelessly to prepare the old ballroom for a ceremony, and while we may not have any guests, I do hope that you will be pleased. I feel like Violet's gonna make a little surprise appearance. <laughs> my voice is hoarse, so the words get lost in my throat. All I can do is smile and nod. Excellent. Then without further ado... The doors to the ballroom open wide, and Elias bids me through. I walk down a tattered red carpet, through the dim, cavernous room, towards the center where extravagant dishes, aged bottles of wine, crystal glasses, silver cutlery, and finally our bouquet await us. No one is watching, and yet, with each step I take, I hear the echoes of whispers, murmurs, cheers, and sobs whenever my foot lifts from the floor. Are these memories of previous weddings Elias has attended, now recreated for his own? I wonder who will officiate. Elias must have some memory of a minister ready as well. I turn my head back and peer at the door, waiting for my groom. As he floats in, the noises grow more raucous, and the lights bloom in a pale blue glow. My gaze is fixed on Elias. An eternity passes in a single second as he reaches the altar, beaming with endless pride. It's time. The crowd hushes down to a murmur before coalescing into a single echoing voice. Welcome all. Family and friends, thank you all for coming today to partake in this joyous occasion. Today we are gathered together to unite Elias Gallagher with his beloved. I still can't take my eyes off my groom. 
Long has he suffered, and now long shall he be overflowing with joy. Let the memories of betrayal, of murder, of waiting, be washed away like leaves in a flood. I mean, we really gotta talk about his murder at his wedding? <laughs> Love has triumphed. Triumphed. Because that's what this is. Love. <laughs> oh, God. If this is what Elias is thinking. Do you, Elias Gallagher, take this person to be your lawfully wedded spouse? To live together in matrimony? To love them, comfort them, honor and keep them? In sickness and in health, in sorrow and in joy, to have and to hold, from this day forward, now and for all time? I do. Do you, my dear, take Elias Gallagher to be your lawfully wedded husband, to live together in matrimony, to love him, comfort him, honor and keep him? In sickness and in health, in sorrow and in joy, to have and to hold from this day forward, now and for all time? Um, <laughs> I... I... Stop! The slamming of ancient doors against the walls drown out all the memories in the ballroom, and the illusions disappear without a trace. Uh, who... Taylor! Aside from the angry echoing of footsteps, there's only me, Elias, and a very, very sweaty Taylor in this otherwise empty sanctuary. I have never been so happy to smell his attempts to mask the scent of sweat with overpowering cheap cologne. That's... that's right! This has to stop! You should have told Elias the truth ages ago! But I was trying to find out the truth. Because you wanted me to. <laughs> I should have told you the truth ages ago. Did he lie to me again? I'm gonna punch this man. <laughs> My dear, is this the spirit medium you were talking to? It is. His name is Taylor. Taylor Potts and... Taylor, why do you interrupt our ceremony? Speak now or forever hold your peace. Elias' eyes flash with frustration. Oh, have I got some words for you, Gallagher? All of this? Taylor gestures wildly around the empty floor and tables. All of this is for nothing! This was a dumb attempt to find a ghost, and now I've put my best friend in extreme danger. They didn't actually believe anyone was here. In my heart, I didn't believe it either. I was desperate. But we did our homework and read that you were obsessed with romance. The idea of it, at least. He's saying that he put me in danger. And yet he busts into this guy's house and starts antagonizing him. And I'm still here. Feels a little counterintuitive there, bud. They aren't actually in love with you, and have never been engaged to anyone before this. We went shopping for fancy clothes to trick you into appearing. Bro. That's my business. You don't need to be telling my business. So stop all of this. We're too young for marriage. We're both just college students, for goodness sake. We have our whole lives ahead of us. Taylor's arms drop to his sides as he takes in a shaky breath. Elias, you should be mad at me. I set them up to do all this. But I should have been the one here, not you. Yeah, yeah, I think so. You should have been the one getting married. <laughs> I look between both the men standing in front of me. Taylor is out of breath while Elias can't find the words. Oh, and he's disappearing. I think we should let OHSIC disband. We need to go home. It's over. What? But... Taylor, don't make decisions for me. My dear is right. They have been perfectly able to choose what they like. I provided plenty of opportunities and... 
Yeah, and they were playing you. She's just blowing up my spot over here. <laughs> Mind your business. Taylor's previous fervor gets a second wind at the sound of Elias' voice, and he puffs his chest. Our goal was to prove you exist. Now we have, and I regret it. He's so nice. <laughs> Taylor. Besides, do you even realize what rushing into marriage does to people? What if it turns out that you two don't even like each other, or can't even stand being in the same room tomorrow? Listen, I agree with the message. I don't agree with the delivery. <laughs> like, this delivery is making me want to marry Elias purely out of spite. <laughs> I don't know about you, Elias. There's only so many tabloids that we can salvage all the way back from, like, a hundred years ago. But have you ever had to watch your parents fight with each other behind closed doors? Well, you wouldn't be watching your parents fight if they were behind a door. Taylor. Elias cocks an eyebrow in confusion. All I can do is stand there and listen, trembling. Rushed, unhappy marriages lead to divorce. Maybe your parents got along fine. Maybe they didn't. But if this was a regular wedding between you and Bud, you'd be waving a red flag for the whole state to see. Mom and Dad tried so hard to pretend things were okay when I was growing up. But I wasn't stupid. I saw the exhaustion on their faces. I heard what they said to each other. No one deserves that. I... I'm sorry, Taylor. I didn't... Besides, after all this, I realized... If he says that he loves me, I'm going... I'm going to leave. <laughs> I'm jealous! Mm. I'm leaving. <laughs> oh, all this time. Wait, jealous of who? Me, I assume. There's a rival suitor vying for your affections. It's true. I think you're great, and I really, really like you. That's why you left me here for two hours when I lost connection with you. In a creepy abandoned mansion with a ghost. I've wanted to tell you that for some time. Since about the day we met, to be honest. But you were such a good friend. A kind friend who supported me in everything I did. I... I was scared to lose that. I was scared to make everything too big. But I guess I found a different way to make everything too big tonight, huh? Think you did. What a charming and sad story, Taylor. Much to my surprise, Elias' voice drips with empathy. His words are genuine. Elias? You're... How could I not be moved? But, my dear, I need you to tell me the truth. What did you come here for? I came here to help Taylor find a ghost. Our ghost hunting group was in danger of closing and we decided to investigate this place. We knew people broke into this place pretty often and no one ever actually claimed to see any ghosts. So we decided to do what we could to make you appear. Nothing I told you about the previous wedding was true. I wasn't left at the altar. I was never even at the altar. I'm just an ordinary university student trying to help a friend. I see. Don't disappear. Oh, it's making me feel bad. There it is. The truth is out. I suppose it had to happen sometime. If Elias could sink into the center of the earth, he probably would. The only thing keeping him afloat is some sense of decorum. But not all of this was a lie, was it? Your demeanor changed as we spent time together. You got to know me. You learned about the real me. And I think your heart opened. Oh no, come on, don't do this! I get that you're lonely, but you're completely missing the point here! Taylor, please. Where we go from here is up to them to decide. I... 
The lights are flickering and the world is collapsing and nothing makes sense anymore. I, I don't know what to do. I should never have come here at all. This whole thing was a mistake. Both Elias and Taylor look away from me. So that is it then? It simply ends with nothing? A tear culminates in the corner of his eye before rolling down his cheek. Not nothing. Let's just go and forget this happened. What was that? That came from above us! Oh no. It's over. It's over. It's over. Run! I can't. My feet are frozen. I can't move at all. With Elias in so much distress, he can't focus his energy on maintaining the building anymore. We crushed his hopes and dreams. Decades of waiting, all for an empty lie. I feel Taylor tackle me in an attempt to escape, but it's too late. My head should be spinning. I imagine I've been out for hours, but I feel fine, because I'm dead. Like nothing's happened. Cautiously, I move my hand out into the darkness and find nothing. Even though I should find something. Oh no. I hold my hands up to my face in the darkness, and I can see right through them, like they aren't there to begin with. Hey! Hey! Someone help me! Taylor's panicked voice rings out in the gloom. Taylor, are you? Something's wrong! I can't feel my limbs! Taylor, I think... Did you get caught by the rubble too? Yeah, but... Oh! Oh shit! Fuck! Like, oh man, <laughs> died. <laughs> yeah, I think we're dead. It's true. Sorry that the mansion couldn't hold you. I did warn you about that rickety second floor. A few times, in fact. He did. I mean, he also did say that as long as I stayed beside him, I would be fine. Elias floats between us, an indiscernible look on his face. He almost seems... happy? And as you also know, it has been close to a century since the estate has seen proper maintenance. Who do you think ensured that the facade and the outer gardens kept well and proper? You entered at your own risk. And now, I think we'll all be together for some time. Uh-oh. <laughs> I cannot tell you how excited I am to have some company at long last. In fact, I didn't expect your souls to stay in this world. So you just murdered us just because you were mad? Like you murdered all of your family? <laughs> but I suppose that you two have some lingering regrets anchoring you to this place, same as me. Whoa, hang on. Elias, we never meant it. Leave if you want to try, but don't expect to get very far. I strongly suggest that we all learn to like each other very quickly, instead of letting this situation fester. <sighs> There's no hope for us? I never said that. Personally, I was never able to leave the mansion even after my death, much to my own chagrin. So I doubt you will have much more success. He looks so sad about it. <laughs> but I welcome you to your new life. Or should I say death? Enjoy it for what it is. Taylor and I exchange glances, then look back at our new host. I can't tell if Elias has lost it, or if he's making more sense now than ever. Several months later? It's taken some time, but I finally managed to get my soul to climb high enough to return to the bedroom. I didn't think moving would be so hard. Elias made it look so easy. Taylor still hasn't quite figured it out. Maybe it's despair. Maybe it's Elias helping me more than him. I thought you might return here. Oh, Elias. It's a nice little bedroom, isn't it? If you want to lie down, go ahead. 
No reason not to relax, even for the dead. I need you to not enjoy this as much as you are. <laughs> okay, also, his head is detached from his body, right? Because that's how he died. Does, it, does that mean that, like, my body is crushed? Because, like, how did I die? Did I die from being crushed? Or did I die because I got pinned under something and then suffocated? Or, like, what? How? What do I look like? <laughs> While you rest, I'll go talk to Taylor. I think it's high time things changed around here. Changed how? For the better, I hope. Wait here. And with his signature bow, Elias is gone. I take up his offer and lie my soul down on the bed. It's as soft as I remember. And I can't help but fall into a deep, long sleep. How to go sleep? Wake up, dear. Yeah, come on! I open my eyes, stretch my limbs, and look towards my morning greeters. What are you so happy about? Taylor and Elias float nearby, hand in hand. Hand in hand? So, we decided to start dating, and we'd like you to join us. <laughs> What? Yeah, was, was not expecting a group dating scenario. <laughs> I thought, I thought everybody was gonna hate each other for eternity. What? Really? I couldn't help but wonder what kind of conversation, or how many conversations, they'd had while I was out. We both have feelings for you, and maybe you still have feelings for the two of us. What do you say? Want to try it out? <laughs> Why the fuck not? It leads to the least amount of hurt feelings. Yes. How about it? We can repair the ballroom if the three of us work together. And we can spend the rest of eternity dancing in each other's arms. Will you marry us? <laughs> we were just dating. Oh, sure, what the heck. After all, if death hasn't done its part, nothing ever will. I mean, it's gonna be an eternity, might as well... ...spend it happily. I do. <laughs> what? I also wonder, so... Violet, was she there or was she just a manifestation? Because obviously the first time he was remembering Violet. So that makes sense for it to just be like a memory. But the second time he wasn't even in the room when we had a vision of her coming at us. So, but it was like, was that his memory? Just being in the place? And why was she in the glass cabinet? That doesn't make any sense. I don't remember seeing this. This is in the, the moments. He looks very unhappy. Okay, so it looks like we've got four more to get to. So that's exciting. I know that we still have another four endings to get through, but I feel like that was the best one. <laughs> because I am a people pleaser. So the best ending is going to be just everybody getting along together and don't make me have to choose because then somebody's going to get their feelings hurt. And I don't like that. It makes me feel icky. <laughs> but we will pick up again and start going through the other endings next time. Don't show your family jewels to anybody except those that you really, really love. And I'll see you next time.